think that brings us to Steve. It sure does. Go for it, Steve. Thanks, Alex. Good stuff, Alex. Thank you. I'm just going to do a run the demo, the warehouse demo that we're that not we weren't running, but uh, the Robotech AI was running at their booth at Roscon. Um, nonetheless, nonetheless, it this is a good example of. Oops. Okay. So first, let me start all the tools. So give to give a quick demonstration, quick uh, description of what's happening now is so when we launch the demo, we haven't started <clears throat> the Ross interactions yet. I just started them just now. So what is happening now is you will see at the top of the screen the robot started happening moving. When we launch the demos, there's a couple of things that this de that this demo demonstrates. One of them is ro robotic spawning. So the robots weren't part of the of this level. So when we started it, one of, one of the first tasks in the ROS application side was to spawn these particular robots. And within this demo, I don't know why those two robots aren't moving. We'll move to this one. So this is a this demo in particular is a scaled down version of what they actually ran on their at their booth and it was a very impressive demo compared to most other demos that was there. They were running what was it 30 30, 30 robots 35 yeah, something like 30 35 robots and there are comments from people saying hey we couldn't do that not nearly as much with Isaac sim for with other simulators so that caught a lot of people's attention. And the way, and they were able to do this, not just with O3DE and the ROS gem, but they also, Robotech themselves, they created an optimized LiDAR gem, <clears throat> which uses a GPU, is a GPU accelerated LiDAR sensor. By default, like everything comes with, right now we're using what's called, it's just a very basic, a software-based LiDAR system. <laughs> But the LiDAR, the GPU LiDAR enabled them to do all those 30 robots. And I think the number was in Ross world, there's a lot of, Ross communicates on different topics and you're publishing 700 topics, which was an incredibly high number for a single simulation. Other thing to note is, because I need to keep talking, where's the people walking? They added these NPCs walking around to, so those aren't controlled by ROS. That's part of the, the demo script. They're just NPCs walking around. The robots themselves are controlled by the ROS application, which is separate, which is running and communicating to the robots uh, through the ROS framework. Right. They're navigating in everything just via their sensors, correct? So they're navigating the ROS uh, application themselves. They have is programmed to go to particular points. So each of those robots are programmed to go to these loading points. And and the robot arm itself is also controlled by ROS. And there's a separate package that ROS has. ROS is basically a lot of different packages and it, it's a very open system. The robot, the robotic arm themselves, is from a group of packages called, like, which, which is specific to for controlling robotic arms. The, but this is really demonstrating uh, like the combination of the the move it packages and also the, the navigation packages that Ross comes with. And the other thing that uh, was impressive to everyone, obviously, was the rendering capability because with what. Because because it's it was Roscon and it was supported by it was hosted by Open Robotics. Most people there were used to Gazebo, and Gazebo rendering doesn't come close. It doesn't have a lot of it doesn't have a ray tracing. None of the effects come close to what they were seeing here. So that was the what caught everyone's eye. And I think. Oh, and the other thing this was demonstrating was the use of PhysX5. Um, those boxes that were that are loaded, they all re respond to physics properly as they should. Robotech, they had run, they had let their uh, one one story was Robotech had let their simulation running for hours, and they noticed 
that one of the boxes fell off. So it, there's like a, uh, it was unintentional, obviously, but because the movements, maybe, maybe because of the, eventually the robots didn't slide into the exact place as they're needed to, because they are controlled through just their sensors. And they, so they don't know anything about the, o, the O3D coordinates per se. Uh, it probably causes a very small uh, differences and, and the boxes were shifted slightly. So that was interesting. Any questions while this is running? Because once the last row of boxes are loaded, actually, let me go up to this guy. Are all so the boxes guy... like dynamic rigid bodies? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. OK. Hmm. So once they're lo once they're loaded, let me see if I can navigate to it. They didn't put in a great navigation. They everything gets moved. Where did he go? They go into this wrapper, the shrink wrapper. Which is neat. And then it moves on to the, the that doorway at the end of the hall, if you see that. And the other thing that this demo, did, this particular demo didn't show, but the Robotech, they, they had a version where they hooked up drone controller to it and they were able to fly through the warehouse with the robots running using a drone controller. So it's much better than this default keyboard control that I'm using right now. And running on their laptop, it was running at uh, very impressively at like 60 frames per second. And that's about it. So any questions about the demo? Or I can try to answer some Ross related robotics questions if I could, but I'm not as much of an expert as Robotech would be. That's really impressive. Yeah. I used to, work, a... I used to work in a place that looked just like this. <laughs> and uh, yeah. So when the the boxes got wrapped there, were those still yeah. the physicalized boxes, or did they do a swap out? They did a swap out, I think. Okay. That was pretty impressive. The other thing that they mentioned was like, even down to the conveyor belt, were was was physics enabled as well. So them sliding around. What you, maybe, I don't. I can see it. I don't know if you can see it. That the conveyor belt is actually moving. It's all yeah. Well, also has its own physics material and stuff too on the belt. Yeah. Because some if there's other demos that that we that are actually come with O three D extras. One of them is like robot palletizer, which is similar to this one. And in that you you'll see as the Boxes are moving through the conveyor belt. They slide around, and depending on their location. And this demo is fully open sourced, or will be soon. Correct. It is fully open sourced right now. Yeah. We, and uh, because of this, uh, we there was the six simulation channel. There's uh, at least one person who was able to get it up and running. So there's more interest in it. And these robots are accurate models. I know that robot. That's a real robot. Yeah, all, all of these robots. And let me um, see if I can show you. Uh, let me launch the editor. All of these robots were actually imported. From real robot models. And that was another feature of that was worked on, which was the importer. So what, there's a the Ross Chu gem has a ha, can can import models ro robotic models using URDF which is the Universal Robot Descriptor format, but it can also support SDF import as well, which are screen description files. I like the little graphic. Yeah, and this demo also pushed. It, 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 did, it was a good push for Linux in general, pushing things to 
the, the limits so far? Yeah, we had to do a lot of hardening to support this demo. It's cool to see that uses for the engine that are outside of games. So mm -hmm. games is what we're we almost always are doing. The nice thing is too that even though these uses are outside of games, everything we do, well, most things we do to enable this, for instance, performance for displaying all of those boxes and everything also impacts games as well. And so is the end use case here, like virtual testing, if they had to say deliver a bunch of robots to work in a given environment and they obviously don't want to take their very expensive, hard to build robots and just set them free for testing purposes to bang into things. Is the goal here to basically quote unquote, set them free within the virtual environment, run the tests, improve them iteratively over time before they deliver the physical goods? Yep. You nailed it. Yep. Human One safety, of yeah. <laughs> There's another use case, which were, there was a few, some interest that was showing was agriculture. Think about the fruit picking, like people came and asking about like the fruit picking scenario where you only have a certain amount of seasons where you can test it because fruits don't grow year round. And then you can't, and then you, you, with a fruit, this gets fruit testing or like orchard testing, it gets very expensive. Once you pick the fruit, they don't grow back right away. So they were asking like this, that life cycle of testing isn't very uh, productive and it's cost could be very costly. Right. Yeah, so it's well, not even the cost because cost can be replaced with more money if you have unlimited budget, but you can't replace the time that yeah. where those plants are not available. And in the case of a warehouse, it's also safety. You don't want to be testing robots with, with humans. Uh, new AI. Yeah, with humans on the floor. Yeah, so. it makes sense. Isn't that what Cruz is doing in San Francisco? <laughs> Hopefully they did their synthetic modeling before we're, before we're hand fed. All right. Any other questions? Oh, yeah. Here's the warehouse level, by the way. So it's a pretty detailed level that they conjured up. And, and so all the, sorry, and all the robotic simulation as well as the rendering itself was all on the same physical machine? Yes. Okay. Hmm. Did Robotech build this warehouse out and the lighting and everything or? Yes. They are, they're very, they have uh, a lot of, they, they have customers that they do the build out the simulations for. So they're very, they, since they've joined the uh, O3DE and, and got involved with OTD, they've, they've ramped up really quickly and, and they've become very proficient with it. These warehouses are extraordinarily expensive. And to build it virtually like this first, to make sure that it's fitting their needs, I, yeah, I can. the value there is amazing. A lot of it has, up to this point, has been trial and error and all that sort of stuff. And we think we need this or we think we need that, whereas they can put the whole thing right here and run a simulation with synthetic actors. That's pretty compelling. Yeah, as I like we, to... Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. As I say, as we found out at Roscon, this was extremely popular at Roscon. It was almost, I, I think, probably the star of the show or the convention, to be honest. I think the power difference, too, that was brought by this is, is shouldn't be understated either. The amount of server resources and stuff that they have to chain together to get any kind of simulation at this size, at, the, at this frame rate to run, and you're doing all this on one one computer, that's impressive. Yeah, it really was. And also after Adam's talk, so he also had a session and I was hoping to be able to send that out like sooner rather than later, but the organizers haven't released that session yet. But when they do, we'll definitely be sure to promote it. I'm going to drop kind of what their, his, his uh, excerpt was, but basically it was called Simulate Robots Never Before with O3DE. And then also one thing that we noticed too, a lot of people had questions around this and we didn't really have a landing page on the website to point people to. So we also created this as well um, with Robotech AI's input, Steve, Joe, et cetera. And just this 
earlier this week, I think on Monday, we sent out a mass email to all the leads. And we had, I want to say maybe like 600 leads from people who came to the booth. We did send them out this information as well. So we do see a lot of interest with that. Very cool. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you, Steve. Great presentation, Steve. Thanks.